hello again, and welcome to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. And on behalf of Alice and myself, we want to welcome you, greet yes, you in the do. precious, wonderful name of our Amen. Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. As we continue on in our look at the Sermon on the Mount, yes. true, normal Christianity mm. that we should be living. Amen. Hallelujah. Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount. So we're going to pick up where we left off. We left off last week. Um, let's see. We were in Matthew chapter 7, and we had just finished verse 20, talking about verse 20, and talking about the fruit that we're supposed to know people by, right? And we talked about love, love. and joy. And we're not going to go through all of the fruit of the Holy Spirit, but I might suggest that you do that. Galatians okay, go 5. Galatians 5, and, and take time this week to do that, all right? But before we start and pick that up, I'm going to ask Alice, will you just ask the Lord's blessing upon yes. our time together? We do. Father, we just come before you with thankful hearts, yes, Lord. humble hearts, Lord Jesus, that you have entrusted us with your word and to be able to share yes, that. Lord. And, and Father, we just ask that you prepare hearts to receive and to yes, change Lord. their lives. And Lord, I ask that you just touch Alan so that he would speak whatever it is that you speak to him. Just open his ears to hear it. We just bless you and praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Father, I just add to that, I just I pray, Lord God, that nothing comes out of my mouth that you haven't put in my heart. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, so as, as I said, we're in Matthew 7 there, and we're talking about Jesus said you'll know them by their fruit. And we, we talked about the fruit of love, and we talked about we were ending on the fruit of joy. joy. Let me just say one thing. In John 17, mm -hmm. all right, I'm going to read verses 13 and 14. And again, I, I suggest that, first of all, that you do follow in your Bible. You need to test what I'm saying. But you might have pencil and paper or pen and paper. So you can jot down notes that you want to check later or verses that you want to look at. Mm. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, so that you may have my joy made mm. full in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. This is the night that Jesus knew it was over, and That's he is right. praying this prayer. So he's come to the Father, and he's praying these things, right? But he's saying, we're, we're not of the world, okay? There's something different here. And that difference is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So go check it out. So now we're supposed to be testing these people who come along and say that they're speaking for God. Mm -hmm. These false prophets. Well, we're testing all the prophets. All right. Okay, not just the false prophets. We're trying to, we're trying to make sure that the person we're listening to is indeed coming, right. sent by the Lord, right? So when you test them by their fruits, mm -hmm. you don't test them by how large a following they have and how popular they are. Right. Remember the many and the few that we talked about here last week, mm -hmm. the, words of, the, the words of Jesus, right? Yes. Many are going to fo go follow that broad, easy way to destruction, mm -hmm. and few are going to walk that path of righteousness, that narrow way that leads it's through the life. narrow gate to life, right? Mm -hmm. Because remember, Jesus also said in Matthew 10, verse 22, he said, You will be hated by all because of my name, but it is the one who has endured to the end who will be saved. This is the promise of God. You're going to be hated by all. Not loved by all. Not, you know, not made a superstar on television. And then in John 15, verses 18 and 19, he said, If the world hates you, you know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world... The world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, because of this, the world hates you. Yes. Popularity may very well be a test to reveal false prophets. They've always been popular. That's right. Well, it's true, it's true because they come, they come giving the people what they want to hear, promising peace, peace, even when there's no peace, right? right. This is like the McDonald's syndrome. You know, one million served. When they have one million served, they go to one billion served. It becomes a popularity, all right? Mm -hmm. For certain, everything, including the false prophets, will be revealed at the end. Yes. Now, that connects us to this. The next verses 
in Matthew 7, here in the Sermon on the Mount, I'm going to read verses 21 to 23. And Jesus, now put this in the context of what we have, all of the things that we have spoken before about judgment, about discernment, about testing, examining, all right? About the false prophets. Put this in here, because now Jesus says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father, who is in heaven, that's who's going to enter, right? Mm -hmm. But those who do the will of my Father, who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, many, underline that word. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name cast out demons. And in your name perform many miracles. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Whoa. Whoa. This may be, I, and I don't know, I'm, I'm just going to say this. I mean, yeah. this may be one of the scariest verses in all of Scripture. I mean, this is, we're talking about the day of judgment. I'm talking about the day when people come into the very physical presence of Jesus Christ. And they have this confidence when they're standing before him. Saying, look what we did. Yeah. Right? Alarm. Alarm. Mm -hmm. Ding, ding, ding. It is possible for people to lie. Yes. A lie is a statement on the lips that disagrees with the truth living in the heart. Yes. Isaiah 29, 13. And the Lord said, Because this people draws near to me with their words and yes. honor me with their lip service, mm -hmm. but they remove their heart far from me. And their reverence for me consists of tradition learned by rote. How many times did Jesus say, You have heard it said, but I say to you, the issue here is pride. Absolutely. Who, tell me, who can come into the presence of the King of Kings, the King of Glory, standing there, welcoming him with arms spread wide and nail-scarred hands, mm. and say to him, only Look what I it. did. They're boasting. Well, they're saying, Look what I did. I prophesied. I did this. I cast out demons. Who can do that? Mm. That's pride. Think about this, okay? Think about what they're saying. And think about what Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus. Ephesus 2, 8 and, 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Mm. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not as a result of works that no one should boast. They're talking about their works and they're boasting in their works. Yes. Had they never read this verse? Have they never heard what Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus? Because what Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus, the Lord God was speaking to the church today. Amen. Amen. How can you come into the presence of Jesus who, who, would this, who hung on a cross and say, look what I did. Look at the works I did. And start boasting. He wrote to the Colossians, Paul did, and he said that no man should boast before God. Mm. But by his doing, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that just as it is written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. I, all I can say is this better be a practice of your life and it better start today if it hasn't already started earlier. Mm. That whatever we need, I mean, we need to not be hearing preachers and pastors talking about how many people they've healed or how many people they've saved Same or how many again. people they, 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 they. Because you want to know something? At the end of the day, they didn't save anybody. No, they did not. Mm -mm. Only one person ever saved anybody, and that was Jesus Christ, and he saved you, and he saved me, and he saved Alice. It is the shed blood of Jesus Christ by which men are saved. Nothing. Nobody else. Nothing else. Paul said, I won't even say I baptized anybody. Mm -hmm. You healed somebody? Now, you know what? You can be used by God. 
But the simple fact of the matter, he said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Right. How can we go and boast about what we've done when we've done nothing other than surrendering to him to be used by him? We're just having the power of God working through us. We're just a conduit. Uh, I mean, you can, you can you imagine the shock for somebody who is so confident in what they have done have to enter into that life oh. and hear Jesus say, depart from me, you evil ones. I never knew you. I'm going to tell you something. It's interesting because uh, I, I was talking to somebody about this the other day. People think that blessings of God come from faith. No, they don't. Watch out. Heresy. They come from obedience. That's right. By Abraham, by faith, it says, by faith, Abraham obeyed. Faith leads to obedience. Obedience leads to the blessings of God. Having said that, humility leads to obedience. That's right. A three-stranded cord is not easily broken. It's about faith, obedience, and humility. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have, if you lack one of those things, I'm going to tell you something. You're going to lack all three of those things. It's go read Philippians chapter two and see what it says about Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. See how it talks about his about his humility, how that led to his obedience. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death, death on, on the cross. cross. That was 2, 8. Philippians 2, 2 chapter 8. 8. No, chapter 2, verse 8. Is that what I said? What did I say? Pay eight. attention. Okay. <laughs> that's why you should be writing this down or checking me. All right. So, but that's, that's so true. I mean, it's humility. What's the opposite of humility? It's the pride mm -hmm. that drives you to a place where you can stand in front of Jesus Christ and boast about what you've done. If you stop and think about it, a person that has, is full of pride, they don't want to obey. They just, they no, just want they to... No, they don't obey because yeah. they're in charge. Yeah, they, it's all they, about they, me. It's all about me. You know, six things it says in Proverbs chapter 6. Six things does the Lord hate, yea, even seven are an abomination. The first one is haughty eyes. That's pride. That's pride. That becomes the gateway to all the other sins. Paul, talking about these perilous last days in 2 Timothy chapter 3, said the first thing he says about these perilous last days is that men will be lovers of self. That becomes, that pride, lovers of self, becomes the gateway to all of those other failings. I'm telling you, pride, obedience, humility, faith, they are three things locked together that are the foundation of our right relationship with God. Amen. God the Father, through the atoning work of Jesus Christ, powered by the Holy Spirit. How's that? But otherwise, I'm telling you, that's not where you are now. That's where you better get soon. Because these are the perilous last days. And the last thing in the world that you want to hear, and it may not even be in this world, mm. is coming before Jesus Christ and you... And, Okay. You, you're not, you're not going to go before Jesus and tell him what you've done. No. No. no because no. if you're doing anything. It, and, your, and your good works are as filthy rags. Well, that's why here in that verse it said, he who does the will of my father. That's it. Right? He who does the will of my father. The will of his father, Jesus, was clearly defined only moments earlier in his teaching on this when he said, let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Matthew 5, 16. Whatever we do, it should honor, it should bring glory to Him. Praise, honor, and glory to Him. Amen. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. So it's not, we can't, God will not share His glory with no. another. No. You know, this is, what, this is we're in 2016. Yes, I can, yes, 2016. <laughs> uh, it was four years ago, we were at one of the uh, conferences, Arthur Burke conferences over in Penmanmar, North Wales. Something we try and do pretty much every year, but we'll see. And during the course of this, I had, I had a vision. I, that's the only way I can, yes, can say yeah. this. And mm -hmm. it, was like I, it, was, it was like just seeing this on a movie screen. I could see a figure standing on a hillside. And I knew, I recognized 
some I recognized in my spirit that it was Jesus not being able to see his face, right? Mm -hmm. And as I was looking at him, I saw somebody coming, running towards him up that hill. And bam, they fell right down mm -hmm. on their face. And it, it shocked me. And I'm, I'm watching, and another person runs from another direction. And the same thing, they get to some place and they fall. And it was like people coming from different directions, and they were falling on their faces. And I noticed that some got right up to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I said, Lord, what? I, I don't understand this. Is that because they're, they're more spiritual? And he said, no, it's because they're filled with pride. That they would have the, you see, the ones who were falling, they were being overwhelmed by the glory, the awesome glory of Jesus. And they were falling on their faces. The ones who could reach Jesus, they didn't have they didn't have that fear of the Lord. They didn't have that sense of his awesome glory. They could run right up to him and say, look, look what, what I did. I did. <laughs> Whoa. If any man boasts, let him boast in the Lord. I'm telling you now, make it the habit of your life, if you are, in, if you are a Christian, to be giving all of the honor, all of the glory to the Lord. Calling him Lord means that you're listening to his commands and carrying them out. That's what it means when James said, all right, James 1, 22 and 23, mm -hmm. but prove yourselves doers of the word and not merely hearers who delude themselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror. And you forget it. Mm -hmm. yeah. For it is not the hearers of the Lord, it's not oh. the hearers of the law mm -hmm. who are just before God, but the doers of the law will be justified. That's what Paul said to the church at Rome, Romans 2.13. But can you want to know something? They didn't come up with a new idea because it says in Deuteronomy 28, verse 1, Now it shall be that if you diligently obey the Lord your God, being careful to do all of his commandments, which I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. We talked about humility. The purpose of humility is not to put you down. Because it says if you humble yourself, he will exalt you. Yes. But he can't exalt you if you're exalting yourself. Mm -hmm. People will come into the physical presence of the Lord the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the King of Glory, and they'll say to him who stands there with nail-scarred hands, look what I did. Okay. Mm -hmm. David, a man after God's own heart, prayed, O Lord, my heart is not proud, mm -hmm. nor my eyes haughty. Psalm 131.1. 1. Mm -hmm. Haughty eyes are the signs. The outward signs, remember? Yes. The, the eyes are the lamp of the soul. Yes. Haughty eyes are the signs, signs of a proud heart. Mm. Let me give you another psalm. Psalm 115, verse 1. Okay. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory because of your loving kindness, because of your truth. Mm. God used Pharaoh. God used a donkey. God used Satan in the life of Job. God used Nebuchadnezzar to correct his people. God gave authority to use Pontius Pilate to fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah. What did he do? Isaiah 53, verse 5. But he, Jesus, was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastening for our well-being fell upon him, and by his, his scourging, his stripes, we are healed. God has made everything and everybody for his purpose. That's what it says in Proverbs 16, 4. God can use anything. How can you boast? God can use a donkey. Mm -hmm. God can use a, a, a sinner like, like Pontius Pilate, a sinner like the Pharaoh. God can use an evil king like Nebuchadnezzar. Don't boast that God uses you. Boast in the God who uses you. When people believe that the Lord using them is a sign that they are special, mm -hmm. that they are somehow deserve the favor of God, right? 
it somehow escapes their notice that it has been his habit through the ages to choose the least. Yes. Like Israel itself. Mm -hmm. That's why he chose Israel. Like David, the seventh and least of seven sons. Okay? They forget that he still chooses the foolish in order to shame the wisdom of the wise. He still chooses the weak to shame the things which are strong. When they believe that he who went to the cross should be impressed by what they did, the floodgates burst and pride floods their lives, mm. leading to destruction. This is serious. I mean, this is at the end of the Sermon on the Mount. This is coming to the place where, where Jesus, I mean, he has said what a life should look like, mm. what the life of a believer is supposed to be. And now he gets to the place and says, but within the boundaries of that church. Remember the, the, the parable of the wheat, I don't know, parable of the wheat and the tares. When he talks about, and we talked about this when we talked about a couple of weeks ago, talking about judgment, mm -hmm. talking about the wolves in sheep's clothing. He, he, there's so much in scripture about these false, false prophets, prophets and false yes. teachers who come along. They're taking, they're robbing, they're trying to rob God of his, the glory that is due him, all right? Anybody that is a believer should remember the attitude of the first minister of the New Testament. Who is the first minister of the New Testament? Who is the first minister of the New Testament? Oh, I heard somebody over there say John the Baptist. You're right. Okay. Wasn't he? Yes, he was. He was. What was his attitude? He must decrease. He wasn't even worthy to tie this. He said that he, Jesus must increase, yes. but he, John, must decrease. Right. What they should remember is his attitude, okay? He said, um, because Jesus said of him in John cha Matthew chapter 11, he said, among those born of women, there has not arisen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Okay? The work that we're called to do is simple. The apostles came to Jesus. You ever, you, you ever get that in your heart? I want, oh Lord, I want to do, I want to work for you. I want to do the works you want me to do. So it says that the apostles came. Therefore, they said to him, "What shall we do so that we may work the works of God?" And Jesus answered and said to them, "This is the work of God that you believe in Him, whom He has sent." John six twenty eight and twenty nine. Mm -hmm. Believe in Him. That's what you do. He does the work through us. He is the one who is working his will, his pleasure in our lives for his glory. Our work is to believe in Jesus, the Lord Jesus, Jesus the Christ, Jesus the anointed. And you better be testing all these other people who are running around talking about the anointing they have, all right? Then he works his works through us through the power of his Holy Spirit. For it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work his good pleasure. That's what Paul said to the Philippians, Philippians 2.13. And all the glory, all the credit, all the honor, then belong to him. Or don't you remember what he had just said before that? Hallowed be thy name. Thine is the kingdom, thine is the power, and thine is the glory. Forever. Forever. Now these people, they came before Jesus and they said, they performed many miracles. Now, you know, Jesus does not in any way contradict the fact that these people actually did these things. Right. No, he doesn't say anything about their works. But, but there's two possibilities here, you know. Mm -hmm. The possibility is that God is using them in spite of their lawless practice. Right. Because God has a, a, a concern, a compassion on the people who are looking for his touch. So, you know, sometimes they go looking over here where they maybe say they shouldn't be there, mm -hmm. but they are. And God will use that donkey right. to reach them and touch them. So that's a possibility. The other possibility is they're magicians. Mm -hmm. You it's know, not lasting. It, it, it's interesting because miracles. we were at Tim Phoenix's house last night and we watched a, a program for a little while on the telly. And it was about optical illusions oh, yeah. and about magic. And they were explaining some of this magic. It's, you know, you see some of these magicians and you say, 
Well, how well they do you know, that? how can they possibly do that? Well, in the, in the Bible, in the book of Acts, there was Simon the magician. Mm -hmm. And people were saying of him, this is the great power of God. Right, but, it wasn't. but it wasn't. God can and will touch lives of people through the works of evil workers because of his love for those people. It has nothing to do with the workers and everything to do with the Lord's amazing grace. Mm -hmm. Magicians, as far back as the time of Moses in Egypt, remember, as the Lord spoke men, mm -hmm. spokesmen, mm -hmm. Pharaoh's magicians appeared to duplicate God's miracles. Yeah. But they didn't ever duplicate God's purpose. <laughs> in New Testament times, I, I just want to read that, okay? Mm -hmm. In Acts 8, verse 9 through 11, there was a man named Simon who formerly was practicing magic in a city and astonishing the people of Samaria claiming to be someone great, and they all, from the smallest to the greatest, were giving attention to him, saying, this man is what is called the great power of God. And they were giving him attention because he had for a long time astonished them with his magic arts. Well, I don't have time to go into all of this, but I'm telling you, I encounter Christians all the time. And they talk about this one and that one and this one and that one because of the amazing things he's doing. Signs and wonders. Well, let me ask you a question. Are they preaching Christ and Him crucified? Are they truly taking glory, giving all the glory and honor to the Lord? Or are they maybe grabbing a little for themselves? And making themselves and, up. And, and, and maybe a little of the filthy lucre mm. uh, along the way. We need to have our eyes fixed on Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. We need to have our ears attuned to His voice. Yes, God can use people. I, I pray that God can use people. Otherwise, what am I doing here? <laughs> but if you're not getting beyond me to the Lord, what are you doing here? <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I want to encourage you to be in the Word. So then when we finish these, when you finish watching this, meditate. that you'll, you'll meditate on the Word, that you'll have conversations with the Lord mm. about what you've heard conversations with the Lord about things that have maybe stirred in your spirit. Conversations. You know what a conversation with the Lord is? Listening. Prayer. That's what it is. It's prayer. I mean, sometimes we think it's got to be with your hands folded, your head bowed, and King James. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, having conversations with the Lord is prayer. Praying and it says ceasing. pray without ceasing. That's right. God wants to talk to you. Because faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word. And that is a faith that if you are humble, will lead you into a place of obedience, mm. that will lead you to the place of blessings. Because it is God's desire to bless you. And Father, we thank you for that. Lord, that your desire, you came, you sent your son Jesus, that we might have life and have it abundantly. Thank you, Jesus. That our joy might be made full. Because of your love for us, Lord God, help us to walk that straight and narrow way, being led by your spirit, you, being led by your word, a lamp and a light to our path, Lord God, being led by your son, Christ Jesus, in those paths of righteousness. Mm -hmm. And Lord, may we do it all for the glory of your name. May the Lord, may people see you in us, see beyond us to see you in us. And we praise you and thank you. If that's your purpose in our lives here and now. Well, Amen. another another time has come and gone. Another session has come and gone. We're blessed that you could be with us. Till next time.